hello and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Expat Profiles. Jesse Bayer, Abundant Living Ecuador, here with Maya Choi. Um, <laughs> excited to be joined today by Maya. Maya's got a really interesting story. She's originally from Korea, um, lived in New York for a number of years, is now makes her home here in, in close to Vilcabamba in San Pedro, Ecuador, um, in the Andes Mountains of Southern Ecuador. And she does some really cool stuff. She has a, a beautiful Korean restaurant, which we literally eat at every time they're open. <laughs> um, she does uh, workshops, she teaches art, she does Tai Chi. Um, she teaches, has various retreats and, and all sorts of cool stuff we're gonna hear about. So thank you for mm -hmm. joining us today. I appreciate your time. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. So let's start with, um, all the way back. So you grew up in Korea and mm -hmm. lived there until? Until, uh, I think when I was 30, I left Korea. And you went to New York right away? I went, went to New York right away and then lived there until, I think, yeah, about 10 years, something like that. And then I left after 9-11. After 9-11. Mm -hmm. And was it, so was it Korea, New York, Ecuador, or was there anything in between? Korea, New York, Ecuador, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And were you originally from the city in Korea, or was no, it? No, I was uh, born and raised in a small, kind of this Vilcabamba area, small little village, and which now became a big city, actually. Oh, really? Here. Yes, yeah. Um, so and you... then, and then went to the university, un university, um, in the capital of Korea, which is called, um, which is called uh, Seoul. Seoul, yes. I went there and then, uh, yeah, my 20s was in, 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 in Seoul. Mm -hmm. What did you study? Korean literature, but actually I have not finished because <laughs> I was kicked out of the uh, school. Uh, uh, back then, my generation is like the last generation of uh, student um, protesting demonstration in oh, Korea. Okay. You know, the 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 for the freedom or for the what you know many things. Oh, interesting. So yeah, I was running around the city and then inhaling all this like uh, the the what is that the gas? Uh, sure. I forgot the name. The yeah. pollution and the, yeah, the yeah. gas that. The police Exhaust. would, yeah, oh. no, police would throw like tear, tear gas. Yes, tear gas. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, you were really pro. And what were you guys protesting? It's a, yeah, back then again, still um, in Korea, the government was still very much dictate under the dictatorship. So, uh, so many of the students uh, protesting about it, and um, yeah, that was my uh, the last and first, first and last kind of a. Uh, you know, reveling, reveling. <laughs> so did you did you leave because um, you were being persecuted politically, or did you just leave for other reasons because no, you wanted just, to? No, uh, just I was just uh, kicked out of uh, just my university. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, I lived my life in only my twenties in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, as of that tendency that I have for the uh, some sort of freedom. Um, which I didn't really understand back then what is really freedom is, but uh, still longing for the freedom because of uh, many social uh, structure in Korea back then was still not very much woman friendly. Okay. And then, um, so yeah, for those reasons, uh, I decided to leave Korea and then finding another place to make my life a little bit more breathable. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lover of freedom too, so I think that's probably something a lot of us yeah, share here. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you left Korea, uh, you went to New York mm -hmm. about 10 years before 9-11, mm -hmm. um, yes. lived in... Oh no, yeah, about, okay, yeah, around, the, yeah, 10 years before 9-11, 9-11 so is 2001, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, spent 10 years there, what were you doing in New York mostly? Mm. Because um, I used to be a, a graphic designer in Korea, and then uh, I was burnt out, you know, doing that work, especially in Korea, the environment, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work, uh, and then uh, uh, and struggle at the same time because I was running my small uh, business, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and then so I had the skill but I didn't want it to continue that because I was burnt out and then uh, trying to find something new to do in my life in the Neo and then I tried a few things like for example pottery and then uh, but I loved pottery but it was not something I could do at that age you know I, I thought I needed something more you know something more uh, with the uh, activity <laughs> you know <laughs> so I decided to study a little deeper uh, about the photography because you know photography you can just carry a camera on your shoulder and you just go out everywhere and then just you know kind of thing so I felt that was much more suitable back then and then uh, so yeah I went to um, community college again in, in New York and then what college because I I'm, fr I'm from New York <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna know it's a, it's a community college named LaGuardia <laughs> of course yeah of course LaGuardia sure. yeah I graduated Brooklyn College oh you did okay and I great. also spent yeah. time at Hunter and yeah. I spent time in Queens College okay. so we, I, I did the CUNY thing <laughs> okay that's great because you know normally it takes like two years right but for me it took me three years with a language learning problem, English sure. and then all those things anyway anyway I was able to finish it at the end so I worked like a friends photographer and then be a, a assi assistant for the some of the well-known photographers I did and then um, and then after that 9-11 happened and then few few years later after 9-11 I was here. <laughs> okay, so mm. somewhere around 2004, you came to Ecuador. No, 2009 actually. 2009, yeah, okay. 2009. Yep, mm. so you've been here, I mean, we're in 2021, so mm. you've been here about 12 years. That's a good Quite amount so. of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so you came to Ecuador in 2009. Did you come directly to this area or have you lived in other places? Yes, I did directly come to this area because, uh, I mean, um, you know, something was really missing uh, in the in my lifestyle in New York was that being in the nature. Yeah. Because I was born and then raised in a natural nature environment, so I guess I think it's like a salmon wanting to go back to the York. <laughs> Swimming upstream. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, and then um, again, I had the same feeling that I had in Korea when I left Korea, like you know, cannot breathe anymore kind yeah. of feeling. So, uh, so me and my ex husband and uh, decide to. Uh, uh, you know take off sometime and then travel around for me it was more like finding a, a place for me to make my life more sustainable and then uh, so we traveled quite a while about a year and then we were in the winter 2008 uh, uh, 2009 uh, we were in uh, Japan and then my ex was uh, ex-husband was following something me too also uh, some website back then and then there is like this many of um, inter interviews about some, you know, of the mainstream news. Sure. So, um, so one of the thing was that talking about free energy, and then, and then uh, he was living in this little village, and then in there, in a, in the in the video, this little video, there is a picture shown was Valle of Vilcabamba, and then. Believe it or not, I my heart was just like a boom, 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 boom kind of a thing. I just did not know. So I started to uh, convincing my ex-husband, we have to check that place. Let's go there. <laughs> so so we came here. And what? then uh, that was 2009 August. Yeah. And then, I mean, for me, it was just falling in love right, right away okay. kind of a thing. And then uh, just I felt that, that was just place for me this was place for me I, I resonate very much and uh, so we spent about three months traveling through Ecuador and then back to New York City and then three months later I came down in here with a three suitcase that was all that was it <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just curious was mm. that video 
the astronaut whose name I'm yes, forgetting. Yes, yes, What yes. do you remember his name? David, uh, uh, no, Brian or O'Leary. O'Leary, O'Leary. that's what it was. Yes, that's what yes, it was. He yes. passed away mm-hmm. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, and so you came, okay, so you come back in 2009 uh, after spending a few months traveling and did you settle right in the valley or did you come to San Pedro right mm, away? I, I lived in um, Vilcabamba, mm-hmm. that uh, around the center, the century uh, in the park, around the park, mm-hmm. but not too close. And then uh, I lived there, enjoyed the Vilcabamba for two years and then life changes and then me and my ex started to, you know, looking at little different, different direction and then uh, uh, the best option we found was <laughs> taking separate paths. Sure. So, uh, so, so, me back, uh, by the time I was able to, you know, buy uh, a little property, so I was looking around, and then uh, I looked around a few different places, but that was not, that didn't really ring the bell in my heart, and then, uh, and then after that. I came, I came up here that mountain, and then, uh, so yeah, that ringed my heart. heart so yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so you, and so you bought some property up there. That's the one you have currently. That's your current yes, property. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So you, you were here for how long, and then you before you purchased? Uh, so about three years late, later, three years of living in the Vilcabamba area, and then I found this place. I found this place before that, and then I just loved it, but it was not, uh, you know, my, uh, it didn't come to me yet, but Wasn't later, right yeah, it was not a good, good way, yeah, it was not the right time, and then, and then soon after me and my ex-husband decided to take a separate path, this came along, that, that property came along, and then, uh, and then yeah that happened just quickly and then ever since then i'm on the on the mountain and i did some sol- solitude retreat by myself and then yeah i did 108 days complete solitude wow. uh, uh, retreat you know didn't come down to the town but staying up on the mountain and then um kind of a thing and that gave me a lot of insight as well was that was that like no speaking no phone calls or was it just i speak but just uh, yeah no phone call because uh, there's no i did not have a phone back then also no internet i didn't wow. even have a, a the uh, electricity really so i lived under the candle lights wow. and then and then for some time also i lived without the gas stove or anything wood, I, wood wood i will make a, i will just put a few bricks you know up high and then uh, I will just make it, I'm just uh, collecting some this like uh, uh, branches of the tree because there I have a lot of eucalyptus tree so mm-hmm, uh, sure. there's a lot of branches so I collect that during the day and then I make a fire in the evening for me to have some food and then in the morning as well so and then there was like a, a, a be- amazing amazing experience it yeah. must have been and it gave me a lot of insight as well and then uh, allow me to let go of a lot of ideas that I was holding on to you know I found that that was just really not necessarily things really and then learned that for our life you know to be happy we don't really need a lot of things yeah that's a great learning for me and uh, yeah Amazing. So, mm-hmm. what did you say? One hundred and nine days? Is that what you yeah, said? 108 yeah, one hundred eight days. One hundred eight days. Yeah, yeah. That's impressive. Um, well, actually, more than one hundred eight days, but I aimed to do finish it one hundred eight days. Yeah. And you did a little bit more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's. Um. I mean, you would have to. I can only imagine how much you would learn about yourself. Oh yes. And yes, uh, yes, how yes. much you would release and mm-hmm, all kinds of, mm-hmm. of stuff. You know, being alone with yourself for exactly. that long. Really exactly. amazing. Um, okay, and so so this was probably we're talking now somewhere 2012, 2013. 2013, yes, yeah. 2013. Mm-hmm. So I I arrived in 2013. Um, uh-huh. So you've been here about four years longer than I have. I see. You've seen a lot of change. Um, well, actually, before we get into that, when did you get the idea for and then start building? And I haven't been up there, by the way. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, you know, I don't know too much about it other than some advertisements I've seen and talking to you a little bit, mm -hmm. but when did you start to get the idea and start creating a space for retreats and workshops mm -hmm. and, and things like that? It's so all connected, right? So um, I got up to the mountain uh, and then um, I started to building my little hut uh, with the local people helped me, local young man who sold the property to me, helped me building a small house for me. And that started 2013, April 2nd. And then I moved in May 2nd with my two cats. That was quick. But it was not done, house was not done. But whole thing, I mean, just literally, I had the roof and then I had walls, but no really floor covered. It was still dirt floor. And then, uh, you know, I did have asked to put the window, but the disguise brought like wrong size. So, you know, I had some window, but there are a few. I mean, one window was missing, so I would just put the plastic <laughs> on it. And I lived like that for a couple months, really. And then, uh, you know, going through with the building relationship with uh, this little house as well was very important for me too. So, um, you know, and then you uh, confronting the very raw nature. Like, and as you know, you already, when the wind blows, it really blows. Yeah. And just to give people an idea, basically July and August yes. tend to be windy months here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably what, what Maya is referring to. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, when the rain pours down, you know, there is like little, little places that I had to catch to a raindrop inside of my room. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, when the wind blows, this little like branches falling onto the roof makes like a huge gigantic noise. Like uh, it seems like it will make a hole onto the uh, onto the roof. And then so all those things, you know. Uh, so in the beginning, I didn't really trust my house, you know. It will it will serve like as a as a house, strong house. But as the time goes by, and then it's like you know. It was like a building relationship with my house. <laughs> and then uh, going through all this like, you know, um, experience with actually with the house. You know, later we, we trust each other. <laughs> 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 so even the wind blows so hard, I know the house is gonna be here. <laughs> it's not gonna be blown off by it. And then, uh, so, um, and then in, there's, uh, you know, this phases as well. In the beginning, we, I mean, I, you know, everything is new, like making fire, and then uh, everything is new and learned, making fire and making, you know, rice with this, you know, raw fire. <laughs> it's like a camping. Yeah. It's an adventure. Yeah, and camping. And about three months later, you get frustrated because you can't really do much thing. It's not convenient. <laughs> it's not convenient. You can't really do much thing because you're doing it all by your own hands and on your body. Sure. So it gets frustrated and then you get over that sta stage and then you started to see another different beauty. <laughs> so I went through this whole cycle of it in the nature and then, um, and then see myself how I was changed from the first moment I arrived the mountain and then uh, years later, you know, you know, when I'm looking at myself, in myself, I am on a very different place than before. So there's a huge appreciation for, for, for myself actually that, you know, and I'm also like uh, proud of what I have gone through also. And then, uh, gradually started to thinking this is really great experience for other people as well you know so how about you know um, opening this place for other people because I had a lot of benefit from it so you know and then later I have this feeling comes rising that I like to share it with other people so that's how it started and then um, and of course, you know, we, we help each other in the human relation, right? So um, initially I was not able to build any of those houses, anything. And then, um, but I have a, a friend who, is, who lives here. And then 
gratefully, thankfully, he just just like um, offer me some something that that I can carry out my vision. So um, it was amazing, amazing experience. And then, uh, so that's how I st I was able to start the building another uh, like a small kuti means like a hut, like yeah, like know, a very cabana simple, or yeah, uh, very simple, yeah. simple, simple, simple. Adobe? Work. Were you doing adobe mostly? So, yeah. That was that was the they call it bareke. It's like Ecuadorian traditional style. You put the bamboo outside, and then you stack the mud inside, rather than using just already already made blood. Yeah. Of adobe. Almost like tapia. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like a tapia. Yeah. A tapia goes like very thick. Right in the form. Yes. Yeah. But uh, this one is like more like this. Interesting. Yeah? I yeah. never. I, I've. I've dealt with a lot of construction i've never mm -hmm. heard of that that's yeah. really interesting but the thing is that it's all experimental and then none of us are knowing what we're doing and we just did it with with ideas because the people who helped me they also did not have much idea about that kind of building style and then um, luckily thankfully i had many eucalyptus tree on the property and then there was a little too much so i had to uh, trim down and then, um, so we use that eucalyptus for the whole that cabin. So that's how it started. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so, and initially I offered to the to artist, come for, as for the artist residency retreat kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And then every year I, I have uh, two artists, two, uh, two months total, one in April, one in the uh, October, it's I'm, it's a free of charge, as long as artists being able to afford flying to Ecuador and then coming to the mountain for one month, uh, they they stay for free of charge, and then I support, and then then they they can do anything they like to doing it on the mountain, just recharging themselves or wow. changing perspective, or just um, you know going a little bit deeper with uh, some idea of the artistic um, creativity, you know. So that's what I've been doing it. And then, and then, yeah, and then later on, you know, um, I started to receive other people as well who wants to take some quiet time. And uh, so that's how it's been. Wow. Yeah. So is it, is it, is it safe to say your motivations for all of this are spiritual as opposed to other stuff or uh, i don't know i don't think so okay. <laughs> i mean actually i mean i believe just the whole our life is a spiritual journey so uh and then um what i'm doing up there i i also you know i'm a part of this human society so of the what sorry human society so uh i like to be a little bit you know I like to be a person who is a little bit more useful for this society. So uh, that's the part of the reason I'm, I'm offering it. And then, uh, and also, as I said before, um, I appreciate the, my experience that I've gone through on the mountain, in the nature, uh, changed me a lot and gave me, gave me a lot of insight. So um, I like to, you know, other people have a same, sort of, never be the same experience, but sort of a similar experience, you know, kind of a thing. And then at the same time, I need to make my life as well, you know, I, I, I need to earn uh, something for my living. Mm -hmm. So, so both, both ways, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so for some of those retreats, you charge something yes, and yes, then, yeah. mm -hmm. got it, got mm -hmm. it. Um, so just one thing I didn't mention in the beginning, we're sitting out here on the pa patio of Maya's restaurant, which she opened recently, just a few weeks ago, I mm -hmm. think. Um, about, about a month ago. About a month mm -hmm. ago. So we now, uh, in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, a small town, a really beautiful community, though, no, now we now have a phenomenal Korean restaurant. Me and my family literally come here and eat every time it's open. We, <laughs> we just love the food. Um, it's one of the things I missed from New York was uh, I had some Korean friends in New York who would take me to the good Korean restaurants in Koreatown and in Queens and other places. And um, not something you could get here, of course, 
and uh, now you can. So where the whole community, I think, is very appreciative for that. Um, so what made you was that what made you want to open the restaurant and, and how's that going? OK, so basically, you know, my main focus is actually not on the restaurant. Yeah. Um, I want to share some practices I'm doing it. And then uh, I was actually another important reason is that I was off from a community for a while, you know, going through within myself and then spending quite enough time just for myself. And then at the end of uh, probably that was like last year, the end of last year. And then, um, you know, I felt doing something you know with this whole pandemic things you know made me thinking really how you know our life is not as fragile you know anything can happen in any time kind of a thing and then uh you know i'm happy up there by myself but you know um somehow i wanted to share those those um uh, those some some learnings that I I learn mm -hmm. and then so make our life a little bit more happier and then uh, even though you know um, along with this all sufferings that we facing to still still perhaps still we can make our life a little bit more joyful and, and peaceful and then you know happy so those are the things that that was that was the more main focus for me to share those things by practicing breathing and then uh, tai chi and some other yoga and um, you know those kind of things <laughs> so you you sort of came here to be able to share some of those yes and then but uh, i need to find a way to find uh you know find the the way to uh, pay the rent because i'm renting this space beautiful sure. space and then uh, it was just like this place was kind of a, almost running down but it has a, a great potential and then i already had the experience spending some months here in that studio mm -hmm. uh, eight years ago before i going up to the uh, mountain and uh, so i already knew this place and then uh, had the great potential but you know, it made me feel sad that the place is just kind of running down. So somehow I felt like I want to revive this place as well, along with my project. And then, uh, so doing this restaurant thing is that um, I'm a Korean. Uh, as 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 it comes as it comes to the Korean food, I think you know, I'm okay to cook. <laughs> oh. That's uh, very modest. And, and then, uh, you know, and, and then also, you know, that's the, I thought of that's the one way to be able to pay the rent. So I decided to doing it on the side, like not every day, or only on the weekend, I mean Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So that is good enough. So yeah, I will be able to pay the rent and then continue to doing this thing. Yeah. And so you're teaching Tai Chi, tai you're chi, teaching Qigong, art, Qigong, art, Qigong, okay. Art, yeah. Anything I'm missing? Uh, that, that is it basically. And then uh, soon I like to form a group of some people who are interested in, in uh, studying some Taoism and Buddhism kind of uh, that philosophy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's something later on. Yeah, if anyone interested in those area you know i like to share and then learning together as well yeah beautiful mm -hmm. um okay so you've been here uh let's see i'm terrible at math in my head we're at 12 years something like that mm -hmm. um there's been a lot of change over that time now of course some of it you may have been off by yourself and not really paying attention but mm -hmm. but you've seen a lot of change over the years here in Bill yeah, how, yeah. how would you describe sort of where it was and where it went and how it is now. Yes. Um, Thank you. Yeah, basically the community got bigger. Yeah. And then the little town of Vilcabamba now became much more larger <laughs> because of people every year, people building, you know, adding more, you know, the uh, floors and then uh, sure. 
and uh, building new houses kind of a thing so physically just like what you see has changed a lot too you know just more people more foreigners than before and then uh, and uh, and then uh, actually side, the size of the little village also has gotten bigger and then uh, probably a people also has changed it local people also about 12 years ago there's like a tension between foreigners and oh, really? uh, yes yes foreigners and then locals you know there are some tensions and then um, yeah it happened once um, some people some local people made these little flyers and then spreading everywhere saying that you know gringos go back to your 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 country oh really yes oh, wow. yes yes that happened before yes and then over the years and then i guess in general we are mingling a little bit better at least surface you know i don't really know deep down but uh, it seems like we're mingling a little bit better so um, the culture is mingling a little bit more smoother i guess yeah interesting that, i didn't mm -hmm. i i've never experienced that animosity so i i'm i'm surprised to hear mm -hmm, that that's mm -hmm, interesting mm -hmm. probably well, many people already forgotten all those things i already forgot too but somehow i remember it now <laughs> that happened really yeah. yeah yeah okay um let's see so um at this point uh do you feel good about where you live do you have regrets do you think about leaving do you want to stay forever where where are you at in that sort of idea that's the thing um i never get tired of this little village around here and i never get tired of this nature surround here around around us just right now yeah because the moment by moment changes so never get bored by it never get tired of it <laughs> so i don't know up to this moment that leaving this place and going to somewhere never be in my head but who knows tomorrow what's gonna be <laughs> sure sure um any um a lot of people watching this are probably considering vocobamba mm -hmm. or ecuador in general mm -hmm. um any any tips or advice anything you would sort of tell people that they should know or they should be thinking about if they're kind of mm. wanting to move here or are going to move here yeah sure you will be very welcomed come here in Bricabamba or this area in ecuador people are very nice i think in general much laid back than any other part of uh, south america so i love that fact and then um uh, and then uh, what else yeah you will love it you <laughs> know come <laughs> <laughs> i love here and uh, i love here so i can say any to anyone uh you are liking it yeah and um i probably should have mentioned all, all also if i didn't we're in we're sitting in san pedro de vilcabamba we're like maybe three minutes down the road from vilcabamba so essentially vilcabamba kind of for lack of a better term, a suburb mm -hmm. <laughs> of Vilcabamba, although Vilcabamba is a tiny town. Um, so we're just sitting like right in, in the town of San Pedro, which is absolutely minuscule. I don't know how many people live in San Pedro, but probably, you know, 500 or something. Mm, um, and then Vilcabamba has about 7,000 at this point, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. So, you know, a, a small area. Um, and again, we're at, we're at Maya's restaurant. If you do make it down here, you've got to come and check out mm -hmm. the delicious, I'm telling you, it's world-class. Like, she'll be modest. It's world-class <laughs> Korean food. It's so good. It's authentic. I, I was in the kitchen one day. I saw the ingredients. I mean, organic and everything is, she's getting, she's sourcing stuff from Guayaquil, which they must be bringing in from Korea or, or New yeah, York or yeah. somewhere. Um, so she does really a phenomenal job and we, we really enjoy the food. If people want to get in touch with you about any of those classes or workshops or retreats, mm -hmm. is, do you want to leave a, a contact for them or should I put yes, it in the description? Yes, yes, yeah, sure, 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 please, yeah, please. Do you please. want to give it verbally or should we put it in the description? You can put it in the description. Okay. And then oh. actually I'd like to share one idea please, sure. about this little village, San Pedro de Vilcabamba. Um, actually, this is like, it's like one separate uh, a little town like uh, Vilcabamba belong to the Loja province, yeah? So, um, but, um, you know, Bilcabamba has been expanding a lot 
because of all these foreigners going there, you know, having lunch and having tea, you know, there's plenty of place that you can have a good coffee kind of a thing. But, you know, here in Vilcabamba, uh, the San Pedro de Vilcabamba is a little bit slower. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, it's not been developed in that manner yet. I feel that I wanting to be part of that developing that process here. So what I'm doing here is like uh, I am uh, planning, actually it's been going, uh, uh, like a mural project. They're saying like we love San Pedro de Vilcabamba. So uh, I like to make this little village, you know, um, more vibrant, yeah. bring more aliveness by, yeah. by adding more colors, you know, by uh, painting murals on the walls, kind of a thing. So, um, so yeah, so if you are interested in <laughs> supporting that project, perhaps, yeah, please click on below where he is gonna mention, yeah. <laughs> and then you can perhaps buy me a cup of a cup of coffee and then they will add to help this, bring this, uh, um, some tourists to the San Pedro de Vilcabamba, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great point, a great mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. I never even thought of it, but from a commercial standpoint too, it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. for there to be places like your restaurant yeah. and other yeah. places. I mean, yeah. we're in between, you know, Vilcabamba and Malacatos and also Vilcabamba and Loja here. Um, so it's a place that people pass by all the time. Mm -hmm. Vilcabamba and Malacatos are very popular weekend destinations for mm -hmm. Lojanos, mm -hmm. from people from Loja, the city, which is 45 minutes away. But really, it's only your restaurant and a barbecue stand exactly. um, in yeah. San Pedro, and, yeah. and they could certainly support a lot more than that. So. Exactly. So, you know, that's the whole part of the reason to bring the more tourists. And that's the president of uh, San Pedro de Vilcabamba is working on, actually, you know, changing uh, this little mm. village, like uh, changing uh, plumbing system or whatever, and then uh, making street a little bit more nicer yeah. kind of a thing and then uh, i like to definitely be part of that process progress so um yeah so it's my personal personal project but yet it's a project of the san pedro de Vilcabamba. so <laughs> yeah and another interesting thing so if you yeah that mountain that you're looking at behind us and then also further that way you start to get back towards potocarpus towards mm -hmm. the national park it's really beautiful. You get all these rainbows uh, almost every day, mm -hmm. I would imagine, mm -hmm. most days anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, you see the rain sort of hanging through the mountains as they roll through. Absolutely pristine water. Um, there's beautiful rivers in San Pedro. There's mm -hmm. a place what they call, what do they call it, like Piedra Grande or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. where you can go swimming. It's just yeah. about a two minute drive from here. Absolutely pristine, crystal clear mm -hmm. river. Um, it's in, it's in a video of two of mine if you check out the um what are we calling that show the uh ecuador weekly <laughs> it's in a couple of those videos you can check out but um but yeah it's really a nice area as you mentioned i think um the nature is mm -hmm, is just mm -hmm, a plus mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. lots of the country but especially yeah. in this region it's it's exactly. really good yeah. but let's see where were we we were talking about yeah this is a little small village about this small village san pedro de Vilcabamba. So yeah, so, so my intention is making this little village more attractive for the tourist. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. I yeah. wish you much success in that. Um, before we let you go, anything anything we didn't cover that you want to mention? Mm -hmm. I think I have talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again yeah. for the time. Yeah. Um, if you guys are watching this, please subscribe. Uh, give us a share. Give us a like. If you've got questions, throw them in the comments. We really appreciate your support. Mm. And um, obviously, if you have questions about real estate, all our contact info is below. And we'd love to hear from you. Mm. Otherwise, have a great day.